What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Throw Show, where we will keep you informed on everything around throwing. That was a bad intro, Trevor. Sorry. <laughs> Cut it out. So we are absolutely <laughs> stacked today with a whole bunch of different throws, all the way from high school, all the way to the world-class level, every single um, throw, disc, a shot, javelin, hammer, and we're going to dive right into it because this past week or two weeks or so has been just phenomenal with huge results. And I think we're going to keep seeing that, that trend on a week-to-week -week basis. One, because uh, Diamond League starting to, to, to pick up, and that's another point of uh, contention and discussion that we're going to go into a little bit later on. But also, um, a lot of the high schools, a lot of the, the states are starting to, to set up their state meets, so there's a lot of peaking involved. Nationals is right around the corner. The Olympic trials is about three weeks away, uh, two and a half weeks away, really. And there's a lot of big throws coming out. So let's get into it. All right. First thrower is Ashlyn Giles. Okay, so Ashlyn's been training here at Garage Strength since... Go back to that a little. Since She's what? She's been training for three grade? years. Yeah, yeah, three years. And, and so here's this throw breaks the Pennsylvania state record. So how'd that feel, Trevor? That was awesome. I mean, for one thing, like, I knew it was coming. I knew it was just a matter of time until she'd hit that throw. I think this is her, this is her fourth or fifth throw. It was 165 what? Um, I actually don't know. <laughs> I always start yelling right when the, like, the feet are, are called, and then I never end up hearing the, the, the inches. <laughs> but, uh... But yeah, she had another at like 160, I think, um, on her last row too. Uh, but but yeah, I mean, it's a PA state meet record. She holds the overall record at 169. Um, and that's a 24-year-old record too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I mean, the the PA state meet was was pretty wild. Like, there, there are a bunch of good performances. There are a ton of, of women. Like, the women in PA are absurd. Like, there's three or four girls over 48 over 48 yeah, yeah. Um, another over 46 and like multiple over over 160 there there are three girls who threw over 160 um, this year um, actually the uh, the girl who won triple a states through 164 oh wow yeah so I mean it, it was stacked so uh, it was a good competition we had um, Dustin Hyde won the men with uh, with 59 high uh, Rashard Williams won uh, double A discus with a 10 foot PR. That was big, but it was a big competition. So Ashley went first in shot and discus. Emma Callahan mm -hmm. got second in. Second with 48. And she fouled a big throw, too. Mm -hmm. um, what did she get in discus? I think fifth, maybe. And then Annika got two medals. Mm -hmm. So we had four state champs. Yeah. Two, and then. Three or four other medals. Freshman Brady Miter threw 52 feet, mm -hmm. got fifth. Uh, yeah, so it's a big day. Um, uh, Congrats to Ashlyn and yeah. well done, Trevor. Yeah, I mean it was. I mean, feels good as a coach when your athletes come out and just kill it. So, um, yeah, proud of everyone. All right, so we're getting into. Right away, we're going to get into some of the the Diamond League stuff. Uh, I actually wanted to do this last. Okay, so we're not so we're not gonna get into this yet. <laughs> we can hold we can hold this off. I, I'm interested to see what your thoughts are on the on the actual rules for the Diamond League, but yeah. wh what's up next then? So this bomb Well this was ninety four, right? Wasn't it ninety four plus? It so, was ninety six. Or wait, this is the ninety four. So um, Vetter goes ninety four twenty four. The third longest throw in history, or was that one the 96-29? The okay. And this was after, yeah, he had a throw like last week when I was in Uzbekistan where he hit 94 and he's like shaking his head. So he has yeah, to have right, had right. In, in recent weeks like huge training throws. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's just and he's just got, obviously he has the feeling right now. Like he feels that if, you, if you're shaking your head after a 94 mm -hmm. foot throw, that means you've been feeling... Your practice throws, you know what you're meters. capable of. What you did I say? Foot. 
Oh, meters, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's massive. And I'm, I'm just, you know, if the Olympics go off, they're going to be, it's going to be insane in the Jav. I mean, in every event, really. The Olympics might not go off. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. That would that would be terrible. Yeah, it would be. Okay, so who's next here? Another German, Christine. Christine, who's So this is the this is the German national record. Okay, sixty nine. That's actually surprising. Actually, you would, I would. I'm surprised that their women's record is not over seventy. Not that that's a bad throw. That's a huge throw. I mean, the. I mean, the, the Polish girl who just threw 70 was third all time, so. I know, but I just feel like the men's are so, their men's team yeah, is so good. Yeah, very true. Yeah, yeah. But this is massive. I mean, big, it's it's crazy just that, like, every single event is just off the wall right now, like, just going off, so. Yeah, everybody's smashing huge throws. Third furthest throw in the shot was two weeks ago, all mm -hmm. time. Third furthest throw in the javelin was last week of mm -hmm. all time. Yep. <clears throat> so then, this is the American record. Right, right. Uh, I guess we don't have a video here. So Maggie Malone oh. went, and was this, yeah, this was at the Chula Vista meet. I think this was, was this on, yeah, this was Sunday. Because uh, that happened, no, it wasn't, sorry, was it Saturday? I think it was Saturday that I, or Sunday I landed and Cece was at that meet. Okay. And that's how I found out about Maggie Malone going 66-82. And that's what's starting to get freaking cool is seeing now, especially with the women's jab in the U.S., it's starting mm -hmm. to, they're starting to really pick away yeah. at that, that international standard and, yeah. and climb up the ranks as well. Yeah, it's definitely, jab's definitely been, you know, globally a weak spot, weak point for the U.S. And this is just awesome to see, you know, she'll be right up there with the, the top throwers in the world, so... Danny Hall. Speaking of the U.S. getting better at events. So this is just crazy. At this meet, there was, I think, what, two or three guys over 79 or three or, three or four over 78? Him going 79, 03. Uh, and I know we have Sean Don on here. He's going 79. And these guys, like, to me, like, he's not even in, like, peak form yet. Yeah, yeah. Like he he's he's looked snappier, so like he's mm -hmm. feeling the positions a little bit more consistently, yeah. which is just it's like all right. So now he's he's feeling positions a lot better because he's he's throwing a bit more smooth. But now as he starts to peak and gets a little bit snappier, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. Yeah, there could be three or four guys over eighty. I know. Yeah, when everyone. And especially like you get in a big competition and, and everyone starts going off. Yeah. Then it just everyone it goes snowballs. Off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So here's Sean Don in his Yeet suit, not his speed suit, going number six in of all time in the US, 7927. Um again, there might be three or four guys over eighty yeah. at at the trials. Even falls off that a little right. bit at the finish. Right. And that's where it's like you're starting to think I think he just he looks better. He looks a little stronger through positions in the in his from his like one through three. He looks a little bit more consistent in that he can handle those positions better and mm -hmm. I don't know, they're all they're yeah. they are all I think we're gonna see something big from Sean soon. Yeah. I mean not that this isn't big, yeah, this, this is, is massive, huge. but I think there's more there. Congrats to Sean Don ripping that bomber. And so going off of Sean Don Alex Young went 78.30, which is the Olympic standard. So now he's definitely got it. Connor McCullough's definitely got it. Um, Sean Don, Rudy. Danny Hall. Danny Hall. Dude, that's going to be crazy. Yeah, that's going to be nuts. That's going to be fantastic. And then now we're going to get into women's discus in the U.S. Rachel Dinkoff goes out and just smacks... Huge bomb here, 64-41. That's the Olympic standard. She's one of only two American uh, women currently that has it. I like that throw a lot. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, she she's moving really well. I think this is going to set her up really, really well heading into the trials. A lot more confidence. She threw pretty well this past weekend again. Um, 
you know, she's got the standard and now, you know, she even notes this. It's like now what's cool too with, with throwing our, this time of, of the quad is that literally people's dreams are starting to come true and come to fruition. Their, their hard work, their, their, their hours and hours and hours and months in the, in the weight room and in the circle and frustration, all that stuff is starting to you know, yeah. come together. That's good. That's a yeah, good toss. Yeah, that's massive. This whole meet. Yeah, this whole meet was phenomenal. Was insane. Shade Lawrence goes 67.05. She's a Jamaican discus thrower. She does a really, really good job of, and if you watch her throw here, and if you watch um, your Indies throw from the Netherlands, they get into a flat left right at the front and they sit on that left forever, and that right side is just super, super aggressive coming yeah. through. And you can see that on there, yeah. how aggressive her right side is on yeah, this finish. Yeah, she hits the finish. I think this might be the Jamaican national record, really? too. Yeah. So that's a huge throw, 67.05. And, and then the big one. Yeah, you're in Dave Van Klinken, 70.22. I really like that throw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's the best, one of the best yeah. reactions I feel like. Just in awe, in shock. I love that finish. Yeah. And that save too, even yeah. using the lip a little bit like a toe board. Yeah. Really good balance. Really well controlled. That's good hip strength what do you like? What do you like best about this throw, Dane? I like her left and her, her right knee in the front. If you pause, I already know because I did a technical analysis that we haven't posted <laughs> yet, but I, her left foot gets rounded flat and that right knee comes through. Um, <clears throat> it just, it's like, you know, right there, the discus is just coming out of her hand and she's still holding that position. So it's yeah. like, it's like, that's right even there. there. You look at her right knee comes through. She squares up that right shoulder really well. She's sitting into that left foot and and she's actually like to me that position right there looks like she's sitting on that left mm -hmm. and the discus is just about to come out yeah. and left she, heel down right toe down right knee bent yep and she just transfers forward into that left side and and smacks around it like mm -hmm. everything comes around that left and it's just yeah dude these are throws Very, her like squared up yeah really like bounced. you see like she's just a solid like you know, you could you could like run into her. She wouldn't move yeah. in this position. I think that's the whole thing too. Is is you you talk about like a balanced position, and that's like it right there. And mm -hmm. I think that, dude, high school throwers watching Yurinde, Shade, Rachel Dinkoff, Valerie Allman, all these fantastic female discus throwers right now, and these are great technical models to watch and and to to execute the way they are right now over and over again. And I had this conversation with Alex Rose after his big throw. We had a good talk when I was in Uzbekistan talking about Daniel Stahl, talking about Ryan Krauser. They're not fancy throwers. They're not leaping with that right leg coming up and jumping out of the back and doing all this fancy twirling. It's simple, repeatable things. It's a long right for Krauser. Mm -hmm. It's a little more narrow with the right leg and stall, but it's the same thing every time. It's nothing fancy. It's just the same precise movement developed over and over again. And that's how these women are throwing. They're, Valor, Valerie Allman looks like Krauser when she throws. Mm -hmm. She's not fancy. She just executes the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. It's wide sweep down, get the left grounded, and smack it. Yeah. Over and over and over again. Shade does the same thing with that left side. You'll see in the analysis. She gets that left side, and the right comes through and smacks. So about this guy... Big L. <laughs> <laughs> no more Ledgy Smalls. Yeah, no more Ledgy Smalls at all. So one of the things that this is a great story is I've been calling Legend Ledgy Smalls for a while or just Ledge, uh, but Ledgy Smalls is sort of like the pecking at him uh, <laughs> term. And he's a guy that came to us. He'd thrown one time over 54 meters when he first came to us, mainly like a 49 to 50 meter discus thrower, D3 guy. Um, said he wanted to be a professional discus thrower. Nobody wanted to give him the time of day, and he came here three years ago, and we've got a, an entire throw show from that long ago where I said, look, I think he could be good. I think he could, if he puts in the work and he gets a lot bigger, he was small when he started. He was like 205. 
get him up to 250, 255, and he has a technical mindset. He's got the, the patience. He doesn't get flustered by dumb, uh, like he doesn't make things more than they need to be. He just executes over and over again. Mm -hmm. And now he's going 63, 29. He's had PR, he's had 60 meter comps all year. Goes head to head with some of the biggest guys in the U.S. and and comes out with a monstrous PR. And now here he is. He's, he hit the Olympic trials qualifier, and he's a perfect example of people, of guys, uh, of of men and women in high school right now. He threw 146 feet in high school, mm -hmm. and now he's throwing 63, 29. It's like you get into a good training system and you stay focused on what your actual goal is and what matters to you the most. And you can do really, really unique stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> but it's avoiding the distractions. This kid's good. This was 65, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah 60, 65, 78. I wasn't, wasn't reading the screen. Jacob Lemon. I wanted, what did he end up throwing? He, I, didn't, okay. I don't know what he threw. I know he, he made got 12th. Yeah, yeah, he was the 12th spot. But um, So Claudio goes 65. It's massive and didn't even win the meet. Who won it? You'll see next. <laughs> this is where I think this all happened when I was traveling. I yeah, swear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. But that's a that's a, and he wasn't even the best freshman. <laughs> what? So that I mean that's a massive throw as a freshman. But yeah. let's give it to to this guy. So um, where's who? Francois? Francois. Francois. I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> such a stereotypical American. <laughs> Can we put that on repeat? <laughs> I told him that earlier. Today. Yeah, I know, I, I know, and I still, I still screwed is, it up. Is he French? South African. Oh, South, South African. African. Okay. Jason, what's his last name? I, I don't Dude, he just goes nuts. The thing that stinks is this is 15 centimeters under the standard. Yeah, that that stinks, but that's a huge. Well, I mean, throw. but but is there still a chance if there's yeah, if they still yeah. take thirty two? Oh, true, true. If they go to the world ranking. Yeah, I like that that's throw too. I mean, he, he takes it real easy out of the back. You know, he doesn't even look that big. He's pretty lanky. Yeah, he's got a high left leg to the front, but he just cranks. Man, that is huge. South Alabama coming through with some of the foreigners again. Yeah, that's big. That's a that's monster. a massive throw. Following that up, another throws you beast. Alex also does a good job getting into his left, but one of the things is we were talking about this is that he sort of he was so jacked up and so amped up to toss. He sort of leads that right knee up and he even said it. he's like dude that's what happens like you're, you're constantly taught that growing up to sweep up yeah. and now when it sort of comes back even when he's ready to crank on one yeah if he can line up with a better right leg out of the back that's simpler more balanced position out of the back will lead to a more balanced position in the middle and if he can get his left leg a little deeper Dude, he's gonna have huge, huge results. You know, this is a huge result. 67, 48, Samoan national record. Um, four or five in the world, I think. Uh, another PR, and he's gonna head in. He's going this week to a NACAC meet in Florida, and then he's going to uh, a meet in Sweden where I think he's gonna have, he's gonna do really well. Yeah. You know, and, and then Alex won this. This is at Tucson. Alex won Tucson. Cyro gets fourth, or fifth. No, Cyro got sixth and, and Sam got fourth. Sam got third, I think. Or fourth. Fourth. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, it's right, like yeah. three of the top yeah. six Kinda guys big. are all from yeah. Throws You slash Garage Strength, yeah. which is cool. That was it's a good neat. day. That was a really good day. <clears throat> and at that same meet, David Blair goes out and cranks on a 64 meter bomb. Um, which is the world record. Yeah, world record in the. I think he's F44, I think. And he's just one of the best guys. He's another guy just following, like, one, what he's been dealing with injury-wise. He's had a lot of funky injuries. Um, he hasn't, you know, he hasn't been able to train as, as well as he possibly could. He's got a great coach. James Park is his coach, who's an Olympian in the hammer throw. I think he's gotten better at getting his left down quicker and staying on that left at the finish. Um 
Yeah, I just think it's it's awesome, and and it's and that's like a good technical throw, very good. Like he gets his right down immediately, his left gets off, and it's just like he just hammers the finish. Yeah, like, it's like Alla Davies. Like these yeah. are guys now. It's like it's just like the, the it's cool seeing like the 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 para group now, and it's like you know women, all the the stuff where. Men would be like, oh, we don't need to watch any of these people. Like, it's like, dude, pay, pay attention to all these other people that are really freaking yeah, good right. and learn from other people. Yeah. His finish, I think his finish yeah. is significantly better. I think a lot of people could learn a lot from watching this throw. And not only that, but follow David on, on Instagram and social media because he's just, you see, like, this is a guy who, who still works a full-time job. I think he's got, like, four or five kids. He's just got so much going on, and he takes care of all the little stuff to try mm. and make everything click and, and continue to work. He's got to defend his Olympic title, so. Yeah. And we got Seaman Peterson goes 69-48. This is, what, number two in the world, I think. His technique I've always really, really liked. Dude. Number three all time about from Sweden. Catching, catching it back and just... Working the finish. I've always liked his left leg. His low left leg gets to the front, and he's another guy that sits into that left heel. You know, and he's not as strong as Stahl, but it's just the way he moves and, and how explosive he is. Yeah. Just, he's just another absolutely awesome technical model to follow. Yeah. Again, it's not it's not crazy. It's it's repeatable. It's it's something that normal kids can do like we can watch this meal yeah we could have our kids do this it's not fancy but it's getting faster and faster and faster and more precise with your with your movement yeah now christian che i think is how you pronounce it and he had a huge throw in 19 too at like 67 high this was 69 52 i think this might be second in the world right now Those Jeff Miller and glasses. <laughs> so 69.52. I think he's from Slovenia. Um, I don't like the camera editing. Yeah, so, note to uh, whoever put this together stay yeah. on the thrower, please. <laughs> yeah, stay on the thrower until the throw's <laughs> over. In the same position. <laughs> But I think he should be going to some of these meets in Sweden in the next two or three weeks. And then, obviously, now we got three guys over 69, handful of guys over 67. It's going to end up being pretty crazy at the at the Olympics when we're talking about the the discus as yeah. well. It'll see. To, it'll be cool to see all these big guys together in one meet and yeah. just you know see see who goes off. You know, see what you know. Yeah, just if you can get the same snowball as some of the other events too. You know? Right. Right. Why is this so color graded weird? Blue net. So this is Stahl's 7383. I saw a, a video from the back of this throw and it looked like he's throwing a one kilo discus. Not, um, <laughs> he's throwing a 2K. <laughs> but he's so but fast. How big is, and how big his hands yeah. are. Yeah, <laughs> and, and the speed and the length of his arms and how well he sets everything up, he's so quick on the finish. It's just, it's like looking at somebody playing with a toy. I mean, really, you throw that and it's like... And the, the other thing about this throw is it's not like this wasn't a savable throw. Yeah, like I he, think he, he just, could say this. He j it was just like almost random chance that he fouled it. Like... Right. You know, it's just one of those throws you just get a little off balance and, and, you know, barely step out. But, you know. What do you think you can do to save this, Trevor? I mean, I think he reverses. He reverses to replacing his, uh, or like, he, re he reverses down the right sector line with his right foot. And that makes him fall over. And if yeah. he would replace the left a little bit more. Uh, like, like rotating more around into that yeah, left side. Yeah, a little more weight on the left, possibly, but... You know, I think again, the next think the next throw I think is as good as fair mark. Yeah. Yeah, on that one his his right foot's a little more centered yeah. when he reverses. That's just crazy though. It's like 69, 70 meter throws just regularly 
73.83, barely fouling. Yeah, that's massive. Can't wait to see when it when it we actually do see it, which we most likely will pretty soon. So, so this <clears> is <throat> you got Ryan Krauser getting into 23.01, the third furthest throw ever. I believe definitely the clean world record. No questions asked here. Um, I analyzed this one too. <laughs> Look at how far the, the barrier is, and yeah. it just like boom, boom. This oh is my just, gosh. dude. Think of all like the people who were yelling at, at home after yeah. seeing this throw. I was yeah. one of them. Yeah, <laughs> as was I. <laughs> Absolutely. Wide down around smash again it's so it's it's just consistent every throw he takes is consistently looking the same it's the same movement it's that wide right cuts in hold around his left yeah and I mentioned this. What if he sits a little more? What if he what if he gets his right down? What if he gets over a little more out of the back, gets his right down even sooner, and he sits on that finish a little more? He could he can throw a 2340. Yeah. Yeah, I mean he comes like, you know, it's almost like I was gonna mention with Stahl how he just he comes through the the finish, so like there's no pause at all, you know. And I think that's something Krauser does very well, that as soon as his left comes down, he's working, he's transferring forward, working to the finish right away. But yeah, if you take that just around a little bit more, stay on the ball a little bit longer, like yeah, I think there's there's I mean there's definitely more there. Yeah, and we're saying this about the best throw ever. Yeah, I mean it, it was all right. Yeah, it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> I think though, even if you if you watch this, this is where I I believe this is that his other throws in this series he was inconsistent with where he was grounding. Like he wasn't he wasn't perfectly right, right. consistent throughout the entire series. And I think that's something where, you know, I think, I think Krauser is one of the most consistent technical throwers out there. Go back to that 2286, because you can, he sort of reverses on this throw. He falls off a little bit. I think he's a little bit longer out of the back, and he falls off on that a hair. Yeah. Watch where he reverses relative to his left. It's oh, like yeah, just yeah. dumps a little bit, right. and it's like that's twenty two eighty six. So he was sl he had two throws back to back that were huge. Yeah. He was slightly off though. In that in that one big series at Drake, he had like all six of those throws were twenty two mm -hmm. deep, yeah. twenty two mid. He even made corrections in that competition to fix some of his positions. If he has another series like that in his current state, he's going to go twenty three twenty to twenty three forty. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. This is massive, big, huge for the throwing world. Yeah, it's, it's huge because this is, and people, I had people when I was in Uzbekistan saying, yeah, I know who that guy is. I saw his yeah. video. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's like, yeah, make sure you <laughs> like, subscribe, and ring the notification <laughs> yeah. bell to follow Throws University. <laughs> but here we got the uh, the men's discus, and I wanted to, to talk about this a little bit because we didn't include uh, Perkovich, Allman, and um, Perez. Yeah, I was, couldn't remember if it was Caballero or Perez. I think, if, I think it was Perez. I wanted to see if Throws You or Garage Strength could rent that space. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's a good toss. So, do you want to break down what the rules are? Okay, right so now? the rules currently are in the, in the Diamond League is you have... You have five throws, okay, and then the top three throwers get another round of throws, and then on that next round of throws, it's whoever wins round six of those three top throwers wins the entire competition. So basically, um, you could theoretically have thrown, you could throw the world record in the first five rounds, yes. but still get beat. In if the, you if, if you have a bad throw in your last throw. Correct, yeah. And so the whole I mean, it's it's sort of like a I don't believe it's the, the, the best system. I mean, they're trying to make it a little bit more entertaining, possibly. Uh, or or uh, a little bit more of a like a I don't know. I think some of the things that they really could do is make like ladders and I, I was actually trying to think about how 
like some different styles of uh, meats that they could create. Uh, here's the Olympic champ, Derek Druin. Not jumping too well, but anyway. Uh, what if it's each round, one, one thrower gets eliminated? And, and they like have that. done that in the yeah. past. They have, okay. Yeah. One thing that I thought that I would propose as a Dane proposal is you get five throws or you get four throws, and then let's say it's four or five throws, and then the top three get three more throws. So the downfall is I don't know how they would handle that regarding qualification. Like what if you hit a huge mark in the third, in that seventh round or, or in that eighth round? Does that count towards... Yeah you know, the Olympic trials or whatever. But the difference becomes now they get three equal rounds and it, and it almost would be cooler if it was on like rapid fire. Like you throw, the next guy goes, and the next guy goes and you get like a minute rest or something. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's like, it, it just adds into, one of the things that's so exciting about CrossFit games is when they do like clean ladders or snatch ladders and they are deadlift ladders and they have to build up and it's on a time, it's on a time limit. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that I've, I've thought that throwing could do um, is just sit there and say, hey, let's, let's take this. And it could even be, you know, it could even be something that they would do with the, the top three get a break and then the next five have to go rapid fire and then the top three come in and they get to yeah. finish off it's just now do you know like right now if if someone would hit a big throw in in the first round does that still count towards qualifications and and rankings and stuff yeah it does yeah. okay yeah yeah and and yeah i mean i think my perspective i guess is is i think it's good that you know I don't think you should ever necessarily just be stubbornly committed to one way of doing things. Right. But I think, you know, I think the important part is that they're taking into account what people are, the responses people are having to, to the, to the layout. Especially and, right now, a lot of people are not happy with this. Yeah. And, and I think that's a, you know, that should be taken into account when, when figuring out, you know, what to do, you know, maybe they stick with this for this year. Maybe they change it this year. Right. Maybe they do something different next year. I don't know. But I think, I, I think, think at least listening to the community is the important part. I think the big one was the discus, if I remember correctly, for the women, Allman had the furthest throw by a decent amount. And I think she fouled her sixth round throw. Okay. And then it went Perez, Perkovich, Allman. So she got third, even though she had won the meet by like three meters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that that's sort of like... Yeah, it just doesn't sit well. Like, Well, now the only thing I will say is that if you're a world-class athlete and they mix up the rules a little bit, and this is one thing I've got to give CrossFit athletes, is that CrossFit athletes are very, very strategic with their approach to specific challenges in the games. So no matter what happens, they look at the rule and they look at the challenge and they uh, at, the, at the competition and they go, okay, what's the best strategic way to do this? And I think that's one downfall with throwers is that we struggle to sit there and say, it's raining, what should we do? Yeah. It's more like, yeah. wow, wow, it's raining. Oh my gosh, my life's over. Right, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like, are you gonna complain about the circumstance or are you just gonna right. game up and, and do it? Like, so I'm not saying that this is the answer because I do think Valerie Allman sort of got screwed on that, but there's gotta be some strategic perspective. Mm -hmm. It's just a little bit more challenging and something that happens as quickly as a throw versus some of the CrossFit game stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So. I don't mind it, but I think it, it's got to it's got to get ironed out a little bit, and and I, I think the the goal behind it is reasonable, but it's not it's not it's not the end product. It can't be the end yeah, product. Yeah, 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 definitely not. So if you have any thoughts on the Diamond League standards, comment down below. Let us know what your thoughts are and how you would improve those that standard and how potentially you would try and change what the Diamond League's doing. Maybe we can try and. Uh, contribute to the entire discussion. If you have any videos that you think that we missed, make sure you give us that hashtag uh, throw show. And until next time, guys, we're going to have a whole bunch more content, a whole bunch of more throws to keep you up to date on all things in the throwing world. Peace.